Development for everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Denny Hunt and Carl Mollison with Get Wisdom. We're going to ch continue with our channeling series. And today, Carl is going to channel Jim Mars. Uh, Jim Mars is a pretty famous journalist in the UFO and ET research community. Um, he passed uh, last year, I believe, in September. And, and on September 26th, uh, Carl and I did a viewer uh, questions for creator uh, channeling uh, uh, interview, uh, part of part of this series, viewer questions for creator, we call it. And we asked about Jim, and he was he is in the light, which was very good news. So he was able to su uh, successfully transition. And from what we've learned, that um, about uh, that that happens for about a third of the people who pass. So um, but that was good news for us. So uh, today I have um, nine questions for uh, the light being Jim Mars. Um, you will have seen a, a biography about him um, as an introduction to this video. So I'm not going to talk too much about his bio right now. We're just going to get right to it. Uh, but first, I'd like to uh, welcome you, Carl, and invite you to talk a little bit about what we're going to do today and, um, and about the whole channeling series uh, itself and the process of channeling. Okay, well, for those who've been viewing for a while, you know that we're kind of on a, uh, a series of explorations and investigations from a scholarly perspective, but also from uh, humanity and its cultural meaning and destiny perspective. This isn't just an idle exercise, it's not a hobby, it's not something we just are curious about and want to kind of look into and has its weirdness and its seamy side, and so it's entertainment. That isn't why we do it. We're on a serious mission here to uncover truth, and especially the truth that will affect our well-being and our future. And it's deadly serious, and there could be death involved. <laughs> so. Uh, it catches up to all of us. If you hadn't heard that, sorry if this is the first time you <laughs> bumped into that little unpleasantness, but uh, how you get there and how it happens and what happens next, you have some things to say about. And that's another part of our mission, which is healing. So all the people we've been talking to are advancing a narrative, tracking the progress of human culture and awareness through time and sharing with us, as we talk to these beings, looking back from the light, an inner kind of perspective about what it really means in a big picture sense. So it's not just about solving a mystery of some particular circumstances, kind of closing off the loose ends of a story and... Uh, giving people a chance to ventilate about maybe how they might have been misunderstood or mistreated. But more importantly, what their life means to us and what are the implications for our future? Because they took part in this progression. So we're here in the same way. We came down for a purpose. I guarantee you. There's no one here on the earth who didn't think long and hard and carefully about coming here. This is not a fun place to be in many respects. If you get away with being unaware and ignorant of reality, you can have a decent experience from it. But most people run into trouble of various kinds. And the biggest trouble is they've been here before when it wasn't so nice. So if you're having a, a nice, easy time, you know, good for you. You probably earned it with a lot of hard work. You know, blood, tears, toil, and sweat, as Winnie would say, Winston Churchill. Because we've usually been warriors for the light. And those are the people who come now. It's the people with a mission and a purpose. And it might be to finish off some karmic business, very personal for them, get some healing done. A lot of people in disadvantaged areas of the world are kind of in that mode. They're working through past victimhood, or lives where they were uh, tyrants of one sort or another, and now they're having a tyrant life, to check and see, can they surmount it? So 
all of this is going on. We all have a story, a personal one, and then one that relates to the fact that we're in this circle of humanity. We're all brothers and sisters here. It doesn't matter what we look like or our language or our nationality. We're all brothers and sisters, and that is the literal truth, and that's what the divine tells us. So as a channeler, I am able to channel the consciousness of other beings. It is a gift, but it's divinely supported in my case because I set out to do it that way. And that's particularly important in doing outreaches of this kind because there's a lot writing on it. I don't want to be a false purveyor of truth. I want to be telling truth as best the divine realm can share with me. Otherwise, all I would be doing is staining my own soul and adding to a growing mound of bad actions that'll come back to haunt me because that's what karma does. It brings back around to you your particular contributions. If you live a life where you're loving and kind and generous, you will get rewarded for that. You'll have that reflected to you by those around you. It'll come back around. You'll be with good people and they'll be loving towards you. This is your reward. You earned it, in fact. If you're harsh, if you're mean, if you're selfish, that'll come back to you as well. And you'll be on a slippery slope and maybe have a series of worsened lives. So the people who came down wanting to help the human struggle, did their best but maybe faltered, have stories to tell, to help put that in perspective. So this is the beauty of what we can do with channeling and reaching out to the light to talk with people who were here before and left a mark, whether it's viewed as a positive contribution or a highly negative one. We've talked to both kinds of people, right. some high level perpetrators right. and some really dark figures in history and the military and intelligence services and so forth and political figures. <clears throat> and it's all useful because things happen for a reason. And that's what we're trying to get to. We want to learn the reasons why, what the motivations are, and who is driving those motivations. For the most part, humans are more like actors on a stage, as Shakespeare insightfully told us many, many years ago. All the world's a stage, and the men and women merely players. We're manipulated all our life long in what we think we know, the information we're taught and not taught, it's all determined by others. And the idea of freedom is an illusion in a big sense because we're manipulated all, all day long to have things happen. And so there's, there's deep suppression and subjugation going on and we need to focus on why that is, where it's coming from, who's doing it, and what does it mean for us in our future? So we've learned a lot of unpleasant things about that. And so that motivates us as well because right. time's of the essence and we're on a, we're on a march here to uh, move things forward, move the dialogue forward. So anytime we talk to someone from the light, we learn a bit more. They have a stake in things here because they were here. They made an investment coming down to be a warrior for the light. Whether they succeeded greatly or faltered, had some limitations imposed, or maybe they were turned to be more a dark influence than a positive one, they still can weigh in on what happened and why. Right. So that's, that's what we're wanting to do here. Okay. So in reaching out with channeling, I'm doing it through creator of all it is and setting up that connection between myself and the being we wish to speak with. And that's quite important because anyone who reaches out intuitively will be noticed and there'll be low level beings wanting to start a conversation with them to co-opt them, to begin a, a, a partnership with them, a handshake. And that's a dangerous thing because it can keep them constrained and keep them limited in what they're able to do. 
because they'll start to be manipulated quite heavily because they're self-identifying as someone who is a danger. People who really can see in a third eye sense are a danger to the cabal because people who can do that can see the truth. They can see the secrets. Right, not a safe place to be. And that, you know, it does create some risk for them. But what happens is before they get there, an imposter will show up and pretend to be their higher self or, you know, a spirit guide or, you know, some, you know, ascended being, an angelic, and take them by the hand and start to feed them reassuring words. Right. And it works like a charm. We all want to be reassured. We all yeah. want to be or get you know, our, fluffed up. Or get our curiosity satisfied or or our worldviews um, validated. Yeah. There's a whole list of things that they can work on in that arena. And, and, and you know, once, you, once we're alerted to that fact, it becomes quite easy to see, um, which is, you know, it's fortunate and it's also unfortunate. One, one of the interesting things, um, Jim Mars... You know, not only was he, he was a good speaker, he was a very entertaining fellow. He, he'd been in the trenches around this UFO thing for many, many years and established himself as a really, um, um, I guess, reliable journalist in, in a lot of ways. He had a lot of respect. Um, um, so there was a lot of areas that we could have focused on because his, his interests around, around the UFO, um, phenomenon the et contact uh, uh scenarios were was extensive i mean that he he was not afraid of going in talking to people directly turning over all the rocks and um and and, and being an investigator uh, a truth seeker um but one of the things that really piqued my interest was a talk that he gave in 2016 and it was about remote viewers and there's I, I kind of view re, re, remote viewing and channeling kind of in the same wheelhouse. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but that's just my perception of it. And then, and I was Carl and I were talking about this, and and I kind of feel like we really haven't uh, delved into this subject too much of remote viewing. So a lot of the questions that I have today for the light being Jim Mars is about that subject, among some other things he brought up in this particular talk that he gave about a year before he passed. So, um, so apologies if some things uh, from other areas of inquiry that he was into is not included in this line of questioning. But I thought this would be good for us just because we really hadn't delved into the remote viewing subject that uh, with you know um, before in the channeling series. I don't know that we've done it at all. We may have alluded to it or talked about it um, you know, referentially or something like that. But anyway, uh, so we have nine questions. It's going to be probably going to be a long session. So with that, Carl, let's go ahead and get started. And if there's, if you have any other comments about the remote viewing thing, go ahead and add that in there before we do start. No, I, I really don't. Obviously, I'm aware of the phenomenon. I've read quite a bit about it over the years and been intrigued. And I understand the workings and, uh, you know, intuition is intuition. However you use it, <clears throat> whatever techniques and tools you follow to help yourself open up, many can do this. And there are many applications, but I think there are risks as well. And I've not looked at that particular aspect. And it's, it just happens to be an unfilled question in the uh, – in the range of possibilities here. I know a lot about corrupt channeling yeah. through imposters coming. And I know a lot about mind control manipulation of people. Right. But no one's ever asked me, you know, do remote viewers always see the truth and what happens to remote viewers? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think of it as something that may be risky because again, like I was saying earlier, when you reach out, you're get noticed. So put two and two together, I, I don't see why they would not right. be met with intense interest and scrutiny and potentially yeah. manipulation. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, yeah. what Mars has to say about that. It'll yeah, be new ground for me. Yeah, and if it's a special category, I, th uh, you know, I think the questions are, are pointed enough that that would be brought out in this, in this session. But we, but we never know. You know some, yeah. so, I mean, we, we've had instances where I've asked a question and we get a dialogue back. 
and we we go back and we we see that that the question itself really wasn't answered and so and I think that's deliberate on the part of the of the um, divine realm in some cases because if they were to answer it directly um, it, it would there would be a problem involved it would be either a karmic entanglement issue uh, or it could be a safety issue or, or usually those are the two things that it falls under but usually there's a good reason why a question is answered in the way that it's answered and it's usually for yeah. our own protection and benefit yeah, you you can only get away with so much poking the deep state in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of funerals out there to prove it. So, right. you know, there's there's a certain wisdom you need to cultivate. And so I, I look to the divine for guidance in the things that I do. But even in something like we're doing here now, I didn't vet these questions with creator. You know, is it safe to ask these things? I'm trusting my own instincts. And I know I'll probably get a bigger alarm bell go off as yeah. I kind of look at the questions. And, and, just and, so, that, and just so everybody knows, we do look at these questions in light of that because we don't want to just yes. throw one out there that we know is going to be a dead end. Right. So, And it's been a learning process for me. And I still feel like I'm learning about what that is and what that isn't. And Carl knows more about it than I do, so the questions are shared with him before we do the interview, just so that we're not wasting each other's time or wasting your time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there needs to be a high purpose for this. And one of the things I not I consider to not be a high purpose is checking everybody's work <laughs> and pointing out how they fell short and they're misguided, they're misinformed, they're drawing the wrong conclusions and and uh, casting aspersions, uh, that's an ego-based activity to really do that. If there's, if there's a high purpose to bring forward truth, I would rather do it as an independent activity and let those other people deal with the fact it differs and let people make up their own minds. Right. Let them look at what others do, look at what we do. Make right. a comparison and so on, but I don't want my job to be, you know, trumpeting my things and how they're better and why and yeah. poking fun at others and all that. So there, there needs to be um, a reason to ask things, and it's always with a high intent behind it. It might be naive, <laughs> and so that those are the things where maybe they'll let it get deflected a little and they won't yeah. take it head on because maybe we're overstepping what's appropriate, but it's not because we're trying to do harm to someone. It's really a genuine desire to understand and learn and, and grow. Right. And, and I certainly don't want to miss the boat. If others are onto something, I'll check it out, but I won't necessarily do it in a public forum like this. Right. I'll do it privately, one on one between me and Creator, and kind of look into it and see, yeah. you know, are these people on the right track? I mean, this sounds wacky to me, but you know, what's the story? And I'll I'll sometimes be quite surprised right. that something weird is actually true and going on. Yeah. So, yeah, we've seen in this years. case, I've not really uh, I've I've looked at a book or two of Jim Mars's, and uh, you know, a lot of the material is sensational and. And, you know, it's hard for me because I've studied those things over so many years, you know, at least casually, you know, taking on books like that from the library because I had an inner knowing there's something to this. There's something to this. And it kind of kept me curious and kept me interested. But I wasn't always prepared to embrace it right. and believe it myself. Right. So, you know, with someone like him, you know, I kind of have a mixed set of feelings about them because... I wasn't as advanced in my understanding as I am right now. Right, 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 right. And, and I'm still a work in progress, so there you go. So yeah. I'm looking to him now for help and guidance. So yeah. this is this is good. Yeah. Okay. All right. With that, let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started then. This is Jim Marr speaking. Thank you for joining us. Given your interest in the ET and UFO phenomena, why were you not set upon by dark spirits and ETs after your passing? And how were you able to successfully transition to the light? 
This is a good question and a quite interesting answer, I believe. I was not overtly spiritual in my life, but yet I was informed all the way along by a strong spiritual connection. This seems like a contradiction in terms, but need not be. There is a difference between an atheist who renounces the divine, anything to do with it, and chooses to be on one's own, elevating themselves to the highest position in the hierarchy, thinking of this as doing one's best to prevail in a dog-eat-dog -dog world of competition and natural selection viewed from the scientific perspective. That was not the type of person I was. In actuality, I was on an important life mission, a mission for the light, for creator of all that is, and the family of humanity, which is an extension of the divine. This is what people fail to learn and need to know most desperately. All are of and from creator directly as a part of creator's awareness and consciousness. This completely changes everything and how it can be seen and interpreted from the smallest of details to the very largest. When you are a part of a living God, this has many, many implications far beyond the right and wrongs of ethics in a human scale world. While I was not a total believer in such a notion, I had many inklings and in fact had quite a robust connection to my higher self. This is how I did my best work. It was inspired. It came from the divine, the inklings, the curiosity, the turning over of rocks to see what was beneath. It was all guided in the way it unfolded by my higher self as an agent of the divine realm, for that is what the higher self is. It is a member of the divine being, and it is there to serve in bridging the distance between you and your worldly consciousness and the divine level that is the larger portion of who you are, the soul, and its place in the human family and with creator and the other forms of life that also spring from creator. So I was always in divine alignment without making that an explicit choice and priority. And so my passing was expected and I was not particularly perturbed because I was feeling the weight of all my earth years and all of the things I had experienced and the hard work that used so much energy and always demanded more and was in fact looking for a time when I could stand down. And even though I was driven and hard charging, one always feels on some level the weight and the cost. So I was looking forward to a rest. And because of my divine connection, I had a quite robust spirit team on hand for my transition. They kept me safe. They paved the way for me to go to the light. And my relative state of well-being emotionally allowed me to be unhindered by my own perceived shortcomings or negativity. This is the greatest break on the system. It is the greatest challenge, what one does to the self. 
because I had not compromised myself through a campaign of negative judgment and self-talk of failure, limitation, shortcomings, doubts, and fears, I was in a fine state of mind to make the transition and take advantage fully of the divine outreach. This is extended to all, even the non-believer. Keep in mind that you are a believer when you are in the light, 100% of you. There is no thought of another perspective because when you are with creator, there is no denying its presence and its power and its fundamental relationship to everything in existence. The idea is completely ridiculous on its face. It is only in a state of disconnection you could conjure up such a reality. This is the dilemma of the earthly, physical human. So this explains my success. And I was very, very lucky because without that protection and support, I would have been heavily targeted and marked for retribution. And that happens, unfortunately, to many who step into the public eye and want to blow the whistle in some way about dark doings. The people who truly run things do notice, and you will be marked for retribution, if not in the living, as you make your transition, and almost always both. This is the fate of the non-believer. If you believe and wish to be a voice of truth, you can ask for protection and be given protection by the divine realm and need not fear retribution. This sounds wildly improbable and an overpromising of possibilities, but we can assure you this is very much the case. There are risks, so we cannot guarantee 100% because you may falter on your end in standing strong. And for this, we may not be able to make up the difference. But that is not the same thing as the light not having the ability to deliver on such a promise. So this simply boils down to people learning the ropes and being prepared. And this is a good example of what is possible. Okay, thank you. You told a story about Bill uh, Powellek and the order of two billion chips. What can you tell us about the order, the chips, and their use? This was an aspect of mind control manipulation from first to last. We cannot set out the chain of events and those involved. This is in the arena of forensics and becomes an intrusion on human doings, even though they are largely at the behest of handlers and manipulators. But the purpose was for developing technologies for monitoring, surveillance, control, and manipulation. And this is very much a dark agenda. There are many potential useful applications for such approaches. They range from the military to the civilian in wanting to do data gathering and to see trends and patterns and to anticipate the need for adjustments in how things are running. You can think of many such uses. For example, the concept of just-in-time ordering of parts for fabrication or manufacturing or repair needs and have a system highly efficient where local storehouses need not be massive and comprehensive when orders can be placed to maintain a small stock and 
act dynamically to fill any gaps, there need not be a massive operation to support this. If you think about the desire of a deep state to manipulate its leaders and thereby the citizenry, the applications widen and further to manipulate people on multiple levels from first to last in all they do. This could not be more sinister because in the end, the ultimate purpose is to control the thoughts, control the experiences, and thereby new behaviors and choices that emerge. If you have the person in your pocket and they are constrained from thinking about what you are doing behind the scenes, but is starting to show up, and they are complacent, disregarding the signs, not having a growing sense of concern, let alone alarm, it is possible to get away with much, much more. So this is very much a sinister operation and was done with willing cooperation by many not knowing or understanding the deeper agenda. This happens over and over and over again, all through various levels of government, industry, and the military. All feel they are patriots. All feel they are serving the cause of humanity, especially the nation state and to the wider circle of free people and so on. But it is an illusion. It is an orchestration to take the good intentions and the heart-based love and use it for dark doings. This is a crime of great magnitude and will have a karmic legacy that is quite difficult and painful for those involved. This is why truth is so very important because evil touches all who are in the chain of delivery, whether wittingly or unwittingly, such participation and cooperation is a blight on the history and will be a wound to the soul and demand a rebalancing and healing. And that could take quite a considerable period of time and be accompanied by great suffering as well. No one survives their doings without making such a repayment in kind. Okay, thank you. You also spoke of Richard uh, Thielman and his role in preparing the world's governments and their respective populations for some type of disclosure. What can you tell us about that? Will this disclosure be about ETs who would like to assist humanity or something else?